obviously the the big question where where the Islanders are concerned is what what is the latest with with John Tavares and and how do you how do you see that going? I know I know you've obviously only been on the beat for a short time, but how, how do you see the John Tavares situation working out? Well, I see it working out much better now that Lou's in charge. I agree. Um, you know, even though John Tavares, you know, always said he had the most, you know, the utmost respect for Garth Snow and, you know, really had a good working relationship with Garth. Um, you know, I, I it just seems, and again, uh, you know, the information kind of, you know, flows to a trickle. But the fact that Lou met with JT a week before he was announced, um, which which is a whole incredible story on its own. Um, you know, I, I I give I give the odds I give much better odds for John Tavares to stay with the Islanders now uh, than than you know probably three weeks ago. But again, it's going to be up to Lou to sell John Tavares on the vision of what he's going to do here. Right. You know, I, I don't think John Tavares is lying in, in when he says he likes it here and he hopes he works it works out. Um, that you know, but he wasn't just going to stay here to stay here. They have to, you know, they have to prove to him that there is a plan. And, and I think bringing Lou Lamorello in the ownership really showed to John Tavares that there is, you know, somewhat of a plan going forward, uh, at least much more than there was, you know, at the end of the season. Well, I mean, the one thing that I they said to my brother when when Lamarillo was announced, I I said I said on the air, Lou he didn't come here to be known as the GM that let John Tavares get away. No, you're so, absolutely right. So you're that right. that to me, when when they made that announcement, to me, I mean, I'm I'm not going to sit here and say that Tavares is a lock to return because obviously we don't know that yet, but you know that Lamarillo is going to do everything in his power to keep John Tavares on Long Island. Yeah, and the whis- the the whispers now are that they're trying to sell John Tavares and Ilya Kovalchuk on the idea of playing together. You know. Yeah, and that I mean he's been in how long is, is Kovalchuk? He's been in Russia for what three or four years now. Uh, well, he quote unquote, and I'm making air quotes with my uh, <laughs> fingers here. Uh, he retired after that lockout short in 2013 season. Okay. So I think it was a 20. 2013, 14, 14, 15, 15, 16, 15, 17, yeah, okay. yeah, five, yeah seasons five seasons in the KHL. Wow. Okay. Well, but you know he's he's looking for about you know a two three year deal, and the word is he's looking for about six million a year. Bring him in. They said they gave <laughs> that's what they gave Andrew Ladd. <laughs> well, you know, I'll take Kolchak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and. You know, and, and you figure the money, and obviously salary cap issues are not not the Islanders' problem right now. The money is there. Right. Um, you know, you, you figure, you know, JT, if he's with the Islanders, that's an eight-year deal at, what, 10, 10 and a half per year, probably. What does Stamkos got? I thought Stamkos got about $8 million a year, or am I wrong there? Oh, uh, yeah, but the, the bar has been reset with Connor McDavid and what those guys are going to get. And, and and Tavares is 28. Yeah. I could, I, I mean, I, I think. I think 27, I, 27. I, so. I think, yeah, if he's 27, I think you're probably starting with, with at least a nine year deal. Probably probably 10. I mean, you well, can, no, you no, can no. just 10, 10, no, how about they, 10 they, for 100? You can only get off or eight. All right, well, then how about eight for 80? Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Eight. Eight years at either ten or ten and a half. Yeah, make it happen. You know, we're talking. You know, where's his agent? Get me, get me his agent on the phone. I'll make. I'll hammer this out tonight. Well, the, <laughs> the money, the money has never been the issue uh, with John Tavares. Very it's, true. It's being, you know, able to convince him that this is a place. Because let's face it, he's going to sign this contract, and you know, he's probably going to spend the rest of his career with the team he signs this contract for, or you know, the bulk of the rest of his career with the, with this next contract. Right. And it's all about convincing him that this is the place where he can have success. You know, I mean, JT hasn't really won yet, you know, and I, I know he doesn't want to go through his whole career being like Ernie Banks, you know. So Correct. Well, Ernie wouldn't be a bad be, one to beat, yeah. Well, I mean, Ernie was a great player. I'm not trying to put Ernie down, but you know what? Uh, 
Ernie didn't sniff the postseason with the Cubs much. That's true. <laughs> We've been talking with uh, Andrew Gross. He is the Islander beat writer for Newsday. Um, have you been watching the uh, the finals just quickly before we let you go? Oh, absolutely. Loving every minute of it. It's um, And what do you think? Uh, I, I saw Saturday's game. Uh, uh, what do you think of it? Um, I, I All through the playoffs, I've been really impressed with the Capitals' resilience. It, it seems like they're a little bit better with their backs pushed up against the wall. And, uh, you know, Alex Ovechkin is finally having the playoff run that, you know, everyone's been demanding of him. Um, true. You true. know what? And, and, and the one crazy one is, uh, you know, I covered Devontae Smith Kelly uh, with the Devils last season. And he was not the player, you know, and he keeps claiming that that was because he played through a knee injury last year. Right. And you know what? I, I'm starting to believe that a little bit because he, he's, he's been a difference maker for this team. Yeah, and he scored, obviously, a huge goal in yeah, game and three. You know what? It, 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 it's too bad because the Vegas Golden Knights story has been fantastic, and Marc-Andre Fleury has just been brilliant up until the start of this cup final. And then, you know, he obviously won game one. He made a few good saves in game one. But it, it didn't seem like he was on the top of his game. Right. And certainly in the two losses, you know, he was not enough of a difference maker. And and it's kind of a shame for Flowers because, you know, he was just so good going into it. And then, you know, Braden Holpe is an amazing story too because you go back, what, a couple of months ago and, you know, everyone in Washington thought Philip Grubauer was going to be the starter throughout the playoffs. Oh, yeah, they were they were looking to run him out of town. Was really not <laughs> playing well. No, I mean, I, Holpe, obviously his only mistake was, I, I don't even know what he was trying to do clearing that puck, but I, I, that that brain fart aside, he he was outstanding. Yeah, yeah I, I'll, throw this, I'll throw this one out for you. Uh, uh, does Lou call up uh, the Caps? At, you know, after this is all over, and offer the eleventh or the twelfth for Grubauer. <laughs> Boy, that's that'd be a question. nice trade. That's a good question. I'd, that'd be if, a... I'm the, if I'm the Capitals, I'd probably take it. I, I, yeah. I would like that. I, I mean, but I mean, you know, and I, I said this to someone else. I mean, you know, does Lou call up the Devils and try and get Corey Schneider again? You know, um, hmm. but you know, I, I think Lou is Lou has made it clear that he is going to bring in a number one goalie. And you know what? If you could snag Philip Grubauer, I, that would be a great get for the uh, Islanders. For sure. What about the draft? Uh, well, actually, your trade just trade away their picks. But if let's say they don't uh, do their their trade, that which I think would be a good trade, uh, wh- who do you think uh, the Islanders are looking at eleven or twelve, or is it too far away? Uh, yeah, to... it's probably a little bit too far away. And to be honest with you, I mean. It's kind of the NHL draft. Once you get past the first like five or seven, it's you know the the, the odds of actually predicting which player your team's going to get is is kind of low. But I agree with you that they need to restock the uh, the minor league system quickly, and they need a lot of help on defense. They need to build this organization from the net on out. Um, they need to you know bring in goaltending. They need to bring in uh, defensemen, you know, because right now this this organization is built the other way. It's built from the front on back, and you and you just don't have success that way. Right, right. Do you think Doug waits uh, around next year, or, or is it's, it's well? Really let's put it this question. way. Let's put it this way: Is he a Lou Lamorello coach? Lou has tremendous respect for Doug Wait, and I believe Doug. Could work for Lou. I mean, they go back to their, you know, time together in Team USA. Right. Um, they they've known each other a long time. Um, Doug obviously would need to tighten up his defensive systems. I, I I believe if Doug stays, there's going to be some changes amongst the assistant coaches. You know, to to sure. kind of more reflect the way Lou wants to coach. But you know what? I mean, there's still reports out of Washington that win or lose, Barry Trotz is, is not coming back next season. Wow. wow. You know, does, does, does Lou stick around to see whether Barry Trotz is available? 
Good point. I'd like, we've, I'd like to see Paris Toronto. We have a lot to look forward to. Uh, thank you, Andrew Gross from Newsday, the Islanders beat writer. We look to ha- forward to having you on during the hockey season. And uh, thank you for joining us on our fourth anniversary show. No, oh, my pleasure. And, uh, happy anniversary, guys. Thank you, man. Take care. Thanks, Andrew. Take, Take care. care, man. That's Andrew Gross, beat writer for Newsday, covering the Islanders. And uh, we didn't even ask the enjoyment he's going to have going to Nassau Coliseum, you know, covering, what, 12, 13 games or whatever, so. I'm, I'm, I'm sure he's eager for I'm, that. I'm sure he is, too. We're going to take a break right now. We'll be back uh, with Wally Matthews from uh, the New York Times right after this. The following program is rated U.S. for unfathomable stupidity. Listener discretion is advised. <coughs> this year, it's the home stretch with Andrew Zucker. Wait a minute. What is it? Zucker? That's weird. And Eric Freschetti in the same crap you've listened to over and over and over again. Action. Adventure. Bromance. Actually, there's really none of that. Okay, maybe a little bromance. What, do you, what else do you expect from a sports show? Sports? Nah. The Home Stretch, Starring Andrew Zucker, Eric Freschetti, KJ Brooks, Cameron Bonagora, and Kyle McKay. <clears throat> All right, I'm getting paid for that now, right? Um, nope. We thought you knew that. Ha! Screw that! You do it. I'm out of here. Uh, crap. The, uh, home stretch on Mondays afternoon at 5 p.m. on The Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. It's now easier to listen to the voice of Nassau Community College on your phone. Stay connected to your favorite radio station anywhere you go on the iHeartRadio app. Never miss shows like the Nassau Morning Madhouse, It's Saucy, or the Radio Rumble again. Streaming 24-7, 365. Listen to WHPC everywhere. iHeartRadio is radio and unlimited music all in one app. Listen live now in the iHeartRadio app and at iHeartRadio.com. Just search for 90.3 WHPC. Calm down, brother. Calm down. Got the, got the alarm playing. Welcome to uh, segment three or four, whatever it is, uh, <laughs> from the press box. On our fourth anniversary show, always a pleasure to have on our next guest, Wally Matthews, or Wallace Matthews, as is that what the byline reads? It's not Wallace. Wally. It's Wallace, Wallace. Matthews. Wallace Matthews. Uh, Kurt, it's the same guy either way. Same and 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 Wally, I have to say, you know, Timmy and I are brothers, and and you have a, a sports writing brother also, Steve Matthews, who does the horses for Newsday. Uh, can you imagine you doing a show with your brother? Because me and Timmy, <laughs> me and Timmy, not really. Me and Timmy, you know, Timmy was just yelling at me for for something stupid, as always. He yells at me for something stupid. Yeah, because he, does, he doesn't read. You know, somebody's sh- got to keep you in line. But if my brother and I did a show, it would probably break out into into a fist fight at some point. We're, we're getting just close. We're getting day. close to that right now. See that since, since my brother refuses to read the show notes that I write. See, I, I would. Well, what I would like to have one day, Wally, is you and Steve come down here with Timmy and myself, and and see who's going to start fighting first. Because I actually wanted to get Steve on today to <laughs> talk about the me. Belmont. <laughs> I must say, probably me. I got the worst. I have, I have, a, I have the, the the hotter temper of the two. <laughs> <laughs> Wally Thank Math- God, because he's bigger and stronger than me. <laughs> of course, Wally Matthews is a, a man of many talents. He's doing the NYNY Baseball Podcast. He's currently writing for the New York Times, and he's writing for Forbes magazine. Uh, and we're going to talk baseball, because that's what his podcast is about. And uh, let's start off with... Uh, What's going on with the Mets? I mean, is is there something we're missing that wow. they're so wow. bad that they're just this. they started out eleven and one and and if they didn't have that they'd be like totally pathetically bad beyond the Miami yeah. Marlins. Look, you guys weren't born yesterday and you didn't just move in here, okay? Right. I mean, the Mets have always been this way, <laughs> with, with the exception of like three seasons in their lives. They've always been this way. And, uh, you know, it's easy to blame it on the current ownership, which is just awful. I mean, they just keep making the same mistakes over and over again. But for some reason, this franchise has always been comical. And, I mean, just the past week alone, just, oh my you know, God. the stadium caught fire, right? <laughs> uh, two, two key guys went I mean, how about the, the, the Todd Frazier t-shirt thing? Who the hell orders 30,000 t-shirts with a misspelling in them? I mean, come on, man. And, and how do you not get those? Like a few days in advance. How do you find out the morning of the giveaway that <laughs> we yeah. can't give these things away? <laughs> exactly. I mean, there's something going on there where, where nobody 
if either nobody's in charge or the guy that's in charge keeps making the same dumb mistakes over and over again. Now, now the, the good thing about that is that, that some third world country is going to get 30,000 T-shirts like they give away the Super Bowl losers. Absolutely. That's either right, that yeah. or they're going to wind up on eBay as like, you know, some kind of collector's item, you know, <laughs> irregular. 